My name is Josh, and I used to put up a lot of videos about my networking equipment. It's been six years since I put my last video up, and my equipment has changed a lot in the time since. The uh, equipment that I used to have suffered an unfortunate fate, which forced me to get all new equipment. Oh no. <laughs> uh, I had a lot of old school stuff before. It was mostly HP equipment. I had old school white face HP rack. Uh, I had a lot of DL 380s. They all had SCSI Ultra 320 hard drives in them. And uh, it did the trick for a long time. But it was definitely time for an upgrade, you know, because all that stuff was old by those standards. So I'm going to show you my new equipment. All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Here is my equipment, and you can't see very well right now, but there are two racks. There is the rack on the left, which I use. There is the rack on the right, which I don't use except for storage space. Uh, it's an extra rack, and all the equipment in it is extra. The rack on the left is the one that I will show you. So, I'll try and show you a little bit better. They're nicer racks. They have completely mesh screens on them. Uh, nice silver trim on the right side of the door. Let's kind of show you up front a little bit. Forgive me for this phone sucking on video. I got a flashlight in my left hand I'm using to show you this. All right, let's show you the inside now. Let's see, check this out, this nice left, nice trim here. All the way along the door, the handle sits nice and flush right there. Opens up effortlessly. Here is the inside of my rack. First without the rest of the light, and then with the light. Here's the top of the rack. Here is an ML310G5, just use it for archiving. Here is an MDS600. Uh, that is a hard drive shelf that can hold 70 hard drives, SAS or SATA or a combination. Uh, that takes 35 drives on the left side and 35 drives on the right side. I only have I only have 28 drives in it, and they're on the left side. And I'll show you those quick. So here they are. Only you know, just pulls out. Takes a little effort. Can hear the fans kick up. Twenty-eight, six hundred gig SAS drives. This unit is attached to the blade chassis below it via SAS cables. All right, that up. and down below we have my HPC seven thousand blade chassis. Over here I have three BL four sixty C G seven blades. Each one has 32 gig, the first two have 32 gig of RAM. Uh, the third one has 48 gig of RAM. Each one has two six core Xeons at 3.07 gigahertz. Uh, this one, this one here, and this one here are attached to the MDS unit. Uh, they utilize, between the two of them, they utilize all 28 of those hard drives. I have two 6.6 .6 terabyte arrays that are mirrored one to the other every five minutes. And then to the right of the last blade, I have a SB40C storage blade. It's just got three or uh, six 300 gig SAS drives in it, 1.1 terabyte usable space. That's also attached to that blade. Below there is two BL460G8s. Each one of those has 64 gig of RAM, two six core Xeons run uh, and a run. Each one runs ESXi 6.5. This unit are the six available power supply bays. I use four. And for those of you who know what we're looking at here. All is well. This thing is full of sensors. Let's see if this thing will focus for you. 
present power, it's only pulling 1,000 watts, so just under a kilowatt. Then down below there, I have a KVM console. You see it's got this nice fancy blue light. Just grab it by the handle, pull it out, flip it up, and what you'll see is I have an HP IP KVM switch. That's a 16 port switch. It's KVM over IP, it's really nice to have. If you don't have one and you have a lot of machines, I suggest you get one if you like console access both at the rack and remotely. Below that, I have a DL370G6. Then below that, I have another DL370G6. Each one of those has two six core Xeons and 96 gig of RAM. And then down at the bottom of the rack, I have an HP R5000 UPS. It is a 4.5 kilowatt UPS. It keeps the entire rack up and running for about 20 minutes when the power goes out, which happens on occasion. And I said earlier in the video that all of my equipment that I had before was old by those standards. By today's standards, this is all, you know, pretty old. It's a 2013, 2014 era, but this is gonna, you know, it's more powerful than a lot of stuff you buy today. This is all server equipment. It's not going anywhere anytime soon. And I have more processing power than I could ever even begin to use available to me and that's not just with this wait till you see the rest of what i got i was serious when i said oh no i had to buy new equipment let me show you my extra rack here quick and all the equipment that i have inside of it is extra so you can see bunch of blanks, bunch of switches. I have another MDS 600. Uh, the right side of it has some hard drives in it. I think I got like 14 more sitting in there. Another DL370 G6, another DL370 G6, and then I have another blade chassis. Uh, it's a C7000 blade chassis. And what you see here are All except one, two, three, four, five, six. So of the 16 blades in there, 10 of those are BL460C G6s. The other six are BL460C G7s. They've all got various amounts of RAM in them. Uh, they've all got du two dual processors. Uh, and this unit has six power supplies in it. Everything in it works. Just don't use it. Don't have a need for it yet. Then we'll bring you around the back side. Show you without light first. There is the back of my rack. Right. And then with light. The cable is not the prettiest in the world, but it works. So this looks like more of a mess than it really is. That's just because there's a bunch of cables hanging out. Uh, I believe in Velcro. Uh, I learned the hard way a long time ago. Do not rely on zip ties. You'll be kicking yourself in the ass when you want to move something around or you have a dead cable. Go with Velcro. Save yourself. I'm always in your chain and stuff. So at the top, I have a ProCurve uh, 2910 AL switch. Uh, there is a two port 10 gigabit module in the back that interfaces with the blade chassis. Below that, I have a ProCurve Secure 7102 DL router. Uh, below that, I have a ProCurve 2626 PWR. It's a PLE switch, but I don't use it because it is really loud and I only have two PLE devices running right now. So, instead of running that loud damn switch, I use these two TP-Link PoE injectors. Let's see if I can get some more light quick. Alright, that's a little better. So, 
So, yeah, instead of using a loud switch, like it's a really loud, high pitched whine. And the switch is covered under lifetime warranty. I just haven't gotten around to replacing it. And plus, those two devices don't use anywhere near as much power as that switch sucks when it's at night. So, here's the back of my archive server, the ML310. There is my cable modem. Just uh, another TP Link cable modem. I believe heavily in TP Link. I like their stuff. Uh, I get 70 down and 5 up. Here are two power strips. These run to a power distribution panel that I have mounted in the side of the rack. Here is the back of the MDS. Uh, of the four power supply bays, I only use two. You see those two are empty. These two are in use. Uh, and here are all the SAS cables, which run up. Over here, you can see there's a grand total of eight of them. They run up and over here, and then they run back down this way. And they run over here, and then they run into the back of the play chassis, where I have two uh, three gig SAS modules. I can hook up even more storage if I want to, which I have more storage and I have more cables, but I have no need to. So what we see here is the back of the blade chassis. You can see there are five fans at the top and there are five fans at the bottom. And you can see there are four power supplies. Uh, they use the C19 adapters. All this runs on 220 power. This is a 6102 uh, XG 10 gigabit switch. That is uh, 10 gig running inside the blade chassis and 10 gig interfacing with the backbone switch of my network. Uh, then below it, you know, I told you three gig SAS switches. Uh, this little guy right here, that is a module that runs to my IP over KVM switch, uh, which runs right there. Now uh, that's the back of the onboard, that's the onboard administrator. That's what lets me log into the chassis and do a lot of administration pretty much all the administration. Uh, right here is my IP KVM switch. That's a 16 port IP KVM switch. And down below that are my DL370 G6s. Uh, and you can see I use the cable management arms. Uh, so I'm able to fully extend each one from the rack. I'll show you that in a second. And then down below that, is my R5000 UPS, four and a half kilowatt. Again, runs on 220 power. That fell over, just to get secure at some point in time. Uh, this cable runs up to, this runs out of the UPS, and this runs up to the power distribution panel that is in the side. I'm not gonna show that to you because I have to take the rack apart. Ah, you see a laptop sitting there. I keep it down here because it's older, it's got a serial port on it, and uh, if I ever need to interface with any of the devices over serial, I've got that machine sitting right there. It's good to go. It's been hanging around forever. Then, down here, I have yet another blade chassis. This one's fully loaded. It has six power supplies. It has 16 BL460C G7s, each one with 48 gig of RAM and two six-core Xeons. So that's like... 192 processing cores and like 768 gig of RAM. Uh, you know, if anyone's interested, let me know. I'm sure we can figure something out. And we've got tons of extra parts, tons and tons and tons of extra parts. Here is the back of my spare rack. I'm gonna show you quick. Either the key being dumb or it's an operator error. I'm willing to bet that it's an operator error. So again, I've got just a, a bunch of new equipment in there, uh, switches, modules. I have even more blades that I can swap in. Back of the MDS, back of the uh, the DL 370s. Then I've got that blade chassis. So I got we got an entire extra rack of equipment and then as promised I will show you those machines fully extended from the rack so here they are 
the DL370 G6s. And I guess go like that. And here's this one, fully extended. There is the other one, fully extended. There you can see the cable man's arms make it so they can just pull right out of there. Everything stays hooked up, stays out of the way, it doesn't get tangled. It works out really, really nicely. Before I let you go, set you down quick. like to see more videos you'd like to know a little bit about the equipment you'd like to uh you got any questions feel free to leave a comment or hit me up in the messages